Now let us further make use of the inversion integral and derive something else that is related. Suppose the unit circle is part of the region of convergence. So this means that uh, z equal to e to the j omega must belong to the ROC and hence we will make use of this fact in the inversion integral. Therefore, dz is j times e to the j omega d omega and uh, this after all is z and hence d z by j z equals d omega. Now let us look at the inversion integral. Uh, since the unit circle is part of the region of convergence and we need to take a closed contour in the region of convergence, let us take this closed contour to be the unit circle itself. Let us take the unit circle itself to be the specific closed contour. Therefore, 1 by 2 pi j close contour over C in the region of convergence x of z, z to the n minus 1 dz. Now, the closed contour C is the unit circle and hence this becomes 1 over 2 pi. Remember, we are after all evaluating this along the unit circle. Therefore, this now becomes x of e to the j omega. z to the n can be replaced by e to the j omega n. And now you can actually write this as dz by jz dz by jz is nothing but d omega therefore this becomes d omega. Therefore, the contour integral really becomes an integral over omega and integral over omega if you want a closed path the omega variable has to take the range either 0 to 2 pi or between minus pi and pi therefore let us assume that this is between minus pi and pi. Therefore, this should give you this after all is the inversion integral. Therefore, this should give you back x of n. So, now recall that the dtft was defined like this x of e to the j omega was n going from minus infinity to plus infinity x of n e to the minus j omega n and this was called as the discrete time Fourier transform. Now we have just now seen x of n is 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi x of e to the j omega times e to the j omega n d omega and this is nothing but the inverse dtft. So, these are very important relationships. So, this is the DTFT formula and this is the inverse DTFT formula.
So in terms of Fourier analysis, what you have seen in the previous course, you had seen the continuous time Fourier series CTFS and then you saw the continuous time Fourier transform. Now we have the discrete time Fourier transform. This seems to be the third uh, Fourier analysis tool that we have learnt uh, so far. And uh, this has interpretations uh, similar to the interpretation of the spectrum for the continuous time case given a signal in continuous time, if you want to know its frequency content, what you will do is you will take the continuous time Fourier transform. Similarly, given a sequence in discrete time, to know its frequency content, you will take the discrete time Fourier transform. And you will get a spectrum, which is a complex function of a real variable, exactly similar to the continuous time Fourier transform being a complex function of a real variable. The only difference is there the real variable went from minus infinity to plus infinity, whereas here the real variable goes from 0 to 2 pi or between minus pi and pi. Given the spectrum, you can get back your time domain sequence and uh, you can either plot this as one 3D plot or you can plot this as magnitude versus frequency and phase versus frequency two separate 2D plots. So exactly the same as what was happening in the continuous time Fourier transform case. There also you could have plotted the CTFT as one 3D plot. Typically you will plot it as two 2D plots, magnitude versus frequency, phase versus frequency. If you look at this, these set of equations, uh, we call this as the discrete time Fourier transform and this as the inverse discrete time Fourier transform and we have labeled this as our third Fourier analysis tool, right. Um, but have you seen this before? Oh, very good. Uh, somebody said Fourier series that is in exactly the right answer. So what we call as the DTFT and IDTFT, I mean this is not really something new. If you look at the discrete time Fourier transform, the independent variable is continuous and it is a periodic function. If you have a function whose independent variable is continuous and it is periodic, then it can be expanded as a Fourier series expansion. Therefore, what you have been calling as the discrete time Fourier transform is really this 2 pi periodic function being expanded in terms of Fourier series, where the Fourier series coefficients are given by x of n, just to see the connection, if x of t plus cap t equals x of t, then x of t can be expanded in terms of Fourier series k going from minus infinity to plus infinity a k e to the j k omega naught t, where omega naught is nothing but 2 pi by cap t and the Fourier series coefficients a k are given by 1 over t minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 x of t e to the minus j k omega naught t dt. These are exactly the CTFS equations and this is the expansion and this is the coefficient. Now let us look at what is happening in the DTFT case. So, the, so these are the uh, coefficients and remember if you have a function that is periodic with period cap t in the continuous time case, then the Fourier series coefficients 
in the frequency domain, they are spaced how much apart? Now, the spacing is and omega naught is 2 pi by t. So, if your function is periodic with period cap t in the time domain, then the spacing of the coefficients in the other domain is 2 pi by cap t, right. Now, if here in the DTFT case, you have a periodic function, the periodicity is 2 pi. Therefore, in the other domain, the spacing has to be 2 pi by 2 pi. The spacing has to be 1, which is exactly what the time domain sequence is spaced apart. It is spaced 1 apart. Therefore, x of n is really spaced 1 apart consistent to the fact that in the other domain, you have periodicity of period 2 pi. The only minor difference compared to the Fourier series, the way that you are used to versus what is appearing here. So, here x of n is playing the role of a k. So, and omega naught is actually 1, all right. So, this is of the form x of n e to the j omega naught is 1, all right. So, the variable t is playing the role of variable omega here and omega naught is 1. So, the only minor difference is the way you are used to seeing the Fourier series is you have a k e to the plus j k omega naught t. Whereas, in this Fourier series expansion, we have e to the minus j omega n. So, this is a very minor difference. If you had e to the minus j omega n here, you will have plus e to the j omega n here. Similarly, in the Fourier series expansion, you can also have the definition as a k e to the minus j k omega naught t. In which case, in the Fourier series integral a k for the coefficients, instead of minus here, you will have plus. So, if you have a plus here, you will have a minus, whereas if a minus here, you will have a plus. And both these definitions are valid, it is just a minor modification. Therefore, if you are used to the Fourier series definition having minus here and plus here, this is exactly the Fourier series expansion of this 2 pi periodic function. Therefore, this uh, DTFT and the inverse DTFT, they are not really a new set of transforms, they are nothing but the Fourier series expansion of the 2 pi periodic function, except that this function happens to be 2 pi periodic in the frequency domain. And the time domain sequence can be viewed as the Fourier series coefficient of the 2 pi periodic function in the other domain, that is all. So, uh, this is not a really new transform. And uh, moment you have the inversion integral, we can talk about uh, certain sequences for which it is easier to compute the transform pair starting from the other domain. Therefore, suppose now we have x of e to the j omega to be 2 pi delta of omega. Again, we have to qualify this using this. Therefore, x of n is now 1 over 2 pi minus pi to pi x of e to the j omega, which is now 2 pi times delta of omega, e to the j omega n d omega. And then, if you use the sifting property, this now becomes 1. Therefore, x of n equals 1 for all n has now transformed 2 pi delta of omega and you have to qualify this with this as we have seen before. So, this is the picture associated with this is
So, you now have an impulse at the origin. So, this is 2 pi delta of omega. So, this is between minus pi and pi and really this repeats periodically because this after all is the DTFT of a time domain sequence. Here x of n equal to 1 for all n is our DC sequence. We are used to calling this as the DC sequence. Therefore, you have periodic repetition. So, this occurs at 2 pi, this occurs at minus 2 pi, this occurred at omega equal to 0. Therefore, x of n equals 1 has transform that is an impulse, but this impulse is periodic and if you want to not use the restriction between minus pi and pi, you have to replace the impulse by its periodic version. Therefore, you have to replace delta of omega by delta omega minus 2 pi k where k goes from minus infinity to plus infinity. It is a train of impulses because it is periodic and uh, this is non-standard notation. You may not find it in too many textbooks. Instead of writing delta of, so this is 2 pi. So, instead of writing it like this as an impulse chain or if you write it as a single impulse and then give this restriction, you can instead use the tilde notation where by the tilde we mean that this is actually periodic. For sequences, some textbooks use x tilde of n to denote periodic sequences. So, we are borrowing that notation and if you write delta tilde of omega, then you know that it is periodic. Now, you need not specify it, this is between minus pi and plus pi. So, this is one sequence which is an example of a sequence having DTFT, but this sequence is not absolutely summable. X of n is not absolutely summable. So, this is an example of a sequence that has DTFT, but not absolutely summable. Therefore, absolute summability is a sufficient but not necessary condition for the existence of the DTFT. If the Z transform contains the unit circle of the region of convergence, we saw that those sequences are absolutely summable that they belong to the class of L1. Therefore, if the sequence is absolutely summable, for sure the DTFT exists, but absolute summability is a sufficient but not necessary condition for existence of the DTFT. And this is the first of several examples that we will see that have DTFT that are not absolutely summable. Again x of n equal to 1 for all n does not possess Z transform. So, this is the analog of x of t equal to 1 having CTFT 2 pi delta cap omega, but x of t equal to 1 for all t does not have bilateral Laplace. So, you are now seeing the counterparts uh, here in the discrete time case.